Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how I'm going to make the leather neckband and belt to go with this scale mail set. Um, the client had provided me with this beautiful mask that they got from another artist um, and they're like, I want the leather to match this. So this is what we're going for. Um, I'm going to be using... She falls over if I leave her on the stool. Um, she falls over anyways. Shit, Bertha, get your life together. Um, <laughs> we're going to be using about a six to seven millimeter um, vegetable tanned saddle skirting because it's super durable. Does not have a lot of stretch to it. This was um, this was from a side of leather, and you can see we've got like the shoulder part here. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Here we have our piece of leather, um, and this is the template that I made actually for a Wonder Woman belt, but I really liked the shape and everything of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through with just some water in a squirt bottle. I'm a little Tamama. Um, and I'm just going to, uh lightly dampen. I'm not casing here. I just want it lightly damp. Um, the surface of the leather. And then I'll be able to take our template and set it down. I'm actually going to try to get this to line up just as well as I can. to be able to fit as much of it as I can on here. And it looks like I'm going to have to just be a little wasteful. I hate to say wasteful because I mean I'm still going to be able to use all of this leather right here, but I do want the full length of this. I'm going to go through with this tool that is a, um, it's a spoon stylus on one end and then just a ballpoint stylus on the other. So you could also use like a, an ink pen or a mechanical pencil without the tip or without the uh, lead poking out, but you know, the goal is to be able to transfer the design without puncturing your template. Now I made this template on a sheet of freezer paper because it has a nice papery side and it has a nice waxy side. And I like the papery side for being able to draw and erase on, and I like the waxy side because I can put it down on a damp surface like this and my paper doesn't get all wet and like it doesn't start disintegrating on me. And so I'm just gently but firmly trying to get it all in just one sweep so there's not a bunch of like weird little lines coming off of it. Transferring my design. And now you can see here how nicely, hopefully you can see, it transferred that line. And now I'm going to do this again but shorter because that's going to be this is going to be the back side of the belt and then this is going to be the front side of the belt now the client's measurements um it needs to be larger than 31 inches which are her the narrowest point of her waist and it needs to be smaller than 37 inches which is the widest point of her hip so um she was like where she would like for it to sit um no higher than 32 and a half so around 33 inches so I'm going to try to make it adjustable from 33 inches to up to the full 37 in case she decides she wants to layer it over some other clothes or you know, maybe have the belt a little loose or something. I like to give that little bit of leeway. Um, so I'm going to see if I can't flip this around. I'm going to spray a little bit more down here. Let that soak in. And position it so that it's not overlapping, but there's going to be as little waste as possible in between the belts. And again, I'm just tracing around. You can 
double check if it shifts a bit. Make sure your lines line up. And there we go. You see, I got off quite a bit right here. But now you can still go through and just even it out. There's nothing wrong with making each of your templates just a little bit unique. Okay, so now I'm going to set that aside, set that aside, and just using a regular old box knife, make sure you've got a nice sharp blade. I'm going to come through and just slice. kind of as far as I can. And I'm going to come through, reposition on my cutting mat. I'm just going to turn that right off the end. And so now that I have that first line going, I can now come through and press through all the way and get to where the cut's actually complete. So I'm going to go through and do this on both pieces, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. The thing that I want to mention is the buckles I'm going to be using are just one inch wide. So whenever you're designing your belt, you want to make sure that your straps are going to be able to fit through on the sides here. And that's something that you can trim to the basic template, or you can redesign the template to be however you need it to be, um, but it's a little less important on the back side where only the tip needs to be able to fit through, but on the front side where it's actually going to be threading through the belt, um, you're going to need to make sure that you've got like about, you know, anywhere from four to eight inches of belt that will fit comfortably and easily through the belt loop or buckle. Something that I wanted to show you guys um, that will help with establishing, like how to establish the uh, width of your line, is here I have a tool called a wing divider. And I'll try my best to have a, com a complete or at least comprehensive list of all the different tools and materials that I use down in the video description below. But here you can see you can adjust it to fit, you know, whatever width that you'd like with this little knob here on the side. So what I'm going to do is starting at around here, I'm going to mark off the one inch line. And I'm doing it right there because um, this is going to be the front piece and I only really need um, maybe 10 inches here in the front. So I actually only need it to like back here, but establishing it along this top line, which that's where I'd like to keep um, the, the curve of. So there's that. And I'm going to come around to this other side here, come out five inches. And it just makes a really great little um, tool for guiding yourself along one edge and then making this other line very equidistant and like parallel to it. Um, so now from here, we can kind of train, again, I'm gonna put this on the mat where I can measure. I need it to come out to here. So now I can train the curve of the belt back down to the point, but in a way that, um, makes it seem like a gradual, intentional thing. And that's all super messy right now, but it'll it'll balance out as we go. Out to here. So now I'm just gonna take it from there and kinda train it back down to the tip. So there we are. And now we can take our box knife, 
but since I'm doing this like this, um, if we have 10 inches of the design in the front, and then an additional 5 inches on each side, I think that'll do us pretty well. So I can mark over here. Just like that. So now I know I can just cut off right there. And save these as scrap because I can definitely use this later. Now I'm going to check for symmetry. Seems to be pretty good. And now from here, I can actually, I feel like I have a little bit more control when I'm cutting, when I'm using my leather shears. So I'm just going to start from the tip and kind of make my way back towards the end here. Being very careful on the back side to keep my fingers out of the way because if this cuts leather so easily it cuts just it cuts slash like butter um, and that is the voice of experience I don't have the scar anymore but I had taken a good clip out of my knuckle one time and uh, it, it taught me my lesson that's for sure <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna start in from the end on this one It's going to kind of come down and gradually bring it down to a tip. There we go. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm like pretty pleased with how that came out. Okay, so now on the back side here, if this is 10 inches long, where the buckle, or where the buckles will buckle, and let's go ahead and call it 12 inches in case she doesn't want to bring it all the way down. So it'll be to here and here. That's 12 inches. Um, then the back side is going to need to be what's 12 plus 12 is 32. It's going to be 22 inches of the design. So I have it lined up here. So we can actually come out, I think, comfortably 10 inches on each side. So there's to the 30 mark. Here's to the 10 mark. And so that's where we'll start decreasing into the belt, because the buckle's going to add about 2 inches in length. So we'll give ourselves 3, just to be comfortable, past that notch. Again, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Um, I hope this works. <laughs> I'm going to trim off the little ends here. There's our one inch width. Oops. There's our one inch width. And now I can train the line kind of, kind of gradually. It doesn't have to be instant. In fact, I think I'll take three inches from here before I have it joined back in the original line. That gives us a really nice gradual sloping. I, I do hope that makes sense. I, I I'm always pair up my descriptions with a demonstration because my words might not make any sense but hopefully what I'm physically showing you might help. Okay, so there we have that. I'm going to put my box knife away before I get hurt. <laughs> and I'm just going to trim this back. Just like that. 
So my allergies are bothering me like crazy today. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so when I come through. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm actually going to come in from this side to make sure it stays nice and gradual. There we go. If you have a little bit of a messy right there, it'll be perfectly okay. We'll take care of that here in a sec. Right, where is that tool? There you are. We have something here called an edge beveler. And what this does is it will take a sharp, freshly cut edge, like this one here, and you can take it and just travel right along and it's going to round off or like its name bevel this edge and I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this to the front and back of both pieces and then I'll meet y'all right back here so I've actually painted up a test swatch um, and it's still quite wet so the blue it keeps blending in more than what I want but I think I have the color scheme down um, to match the original like I said it's like if I could add in more blue uh, that'll work out but I'm pretty pleased with this so far so to get to this next step I'm gonna come through I actually cut out a template um, for a necklace, which was a combination of using this round um, thing that I use whenever I'm doing foam crafting. Um, it's just a piece of like marble, like a marble trivet that we got from like Goodwill or something um, to do the outside line. And then I used the point from one of these to kind of blend up into it. And then I used the wing divider set again at one inch to uh, follow along the edge to establish where the center line was going to be. Um, so that's kind of how I did this one. But I'm going to be going through now, and I have my wing divider set at a little under a quarter of an inch. Um, and I'm going to mist these. Since um, I'm going to be shipping this in the next couple of days, uh, due to time constraints, I'm not going to do a full casing, but I think this will do us just fine. So I'm kind of just blending that out, blending the water. And it soaks in nicely. Okay, so now for the back side. Kind of using my hands to distribute the water evenly. Okay, so now I have an, an end punch, which is going to give me some really nice consistent ends. You could also just draw up your own template, or a uh, handy leather has some templates for sale. I personally really like these because they're sharp and they get the job done like fast. Which is nice. <laughs> there we are. So there's our neck piece. There's the end strap for the front panel. And now here's the back panel. And it's just something that, I don't know, for me, with as much with as much work as I do um, in leather, it was worth the investment to get the tool that does it consistently and easily, and it's just done. 
Okay, so now from here, this is the back piece. Um, so I'm just going to come in, and from the tip here, start lining up and drawing out an edge. Just like this. All the way down. And around to the other side. I personally really like the way things look when they have a border. Um, but you could totally just skip this step. But I feel like it gives it a really finished, nice, professional, even look. So in the steps I'm demonstrating on this one, I'll be going through and doing on the other pieces just off camera. So now I have a tool called a swivel knife, and this one has a very wide, deep setting blade that's just straight, like it's not offset at an angle or anything. And I'm just going to come in and deeply cut on that line that we just did. with our ring divider. And I messed up a little bit and it trailed right off the edge there. It's not the end of the world. I'm just gonna... There we go. Get it back on course. Mistakes happen, but you can kind of blend it out with your finger a little bit. And we are going to be having a bunch of uh, scale strips hanging down off of this edge. So of all the edges to mess up on the bottom edge was the one to do it. Because we'll probably be able to conceal that. And we're going to be a little bit more careful on this top edge. Especially with it being such a narrow border. You, um, your blade is going to want to kind of slip off the edge. continue cutting around down to the point. So there's that. I'm going to remove my cutting board and now I'm going to re-wet it and I'm just going to demonstrate on like an end here or I guess here in the center part really. Let that soak in nice and even. And so what I'm going to be demonstrating is normally I'd start all the way up here at the end, but I'm just going to do it here in this center area because then that will build off towards the edges. Um, I have a tool called a beveler, and this one's textured. It has a nice little texture pattern on it. And I'm just lining up with the edge. Let me see if I can bring our camera down a little bit so I've got this new camera arm that is just super fancy but I'm not entirely positive of what all it can do yet okay so here you can see that's where the beveling has gone in I'm just lining the deep edge of the beveler up with this line just like that. And I'm just going to kind of hammer and walk it along. So you can see kind of how that happened. Will this bend down even more, I wonder? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited about this camera arm, you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to rotate my work, and I'm going to come out just a couple of inches. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this to the entire piece. This is just for demonstration purposes. So 
that's how that comes along. And so now you can really see the difference between a beveled side and an unbeveled side. Lots of leather crud everywhere. But it really gives us some nice shaping. So I'm going to come around and I'm going to do this again just on this segment here in line with what I've already done. And I'm just letting it move just a little at a time. I'm using my pinky here to like kind of stabilize my hand. And it's just with each pound it jumps just a little bit and the more you practice the better you'll get and the faster you'll get and you'll be able to just kind of chisel away carving and imprinting into the leather just like that Okay, so now from here, let me zoom back out just a hair. I'm going to be using, this is called a mule foot, and it makes a very beautiful, like, scale pattern. I'm going to turn it because the scales are going to be growing this way, and this is the way I prefer to work with it. Now keep in mind, you do you. <laughs> like, on your project, you can have your scales go whichever way you like, but I'm just going to place this right about here, and hit my camera arm um, but you can see it gave us a nice imprint let's so move off to the side just a little and you want to give a good solid print stamping <laughs> sorry I keep hitting the camera <laughs> like the camera arm let me see if I can't scooch this over just a bit there we are so now I won't be hitting the camera arm as much okay so that's our first row now our second row I'm going to position just right here like that It didn't seem like I'm finding a happy place to put it. To put the uh, hammer, so I'm just going to lift this all up. So sorry for the ah, change in camera angles. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now I can swing freely and not have to worry about anything like that. And you can see I'm just building this uh, scale pattern. And I don't want to exceed the bottom edge. Now, I could have waited and done the beveling afterwards. That way, if I wanted to make sure it was a nice, clean, smooth transition into the edge there. So, ideas for sure. And I'm just going to fill in the entire belt like this. But as I come around, I'm actually going to kind of grow it outward a little bit. Um, so let me bevel this bottom edge a bit. And so to do that, I'm just going to rotate them outward like that. And so you can see it's just going to start kind of growing down the leather. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. So 
see how that happens. And that way it's just going to start growing down. Um, because otherwise whenever it gets super thin, I'd rather the scale placement be like going that way as opposed to vertically up and down. Sorry, don't mean to go off camera. So I'm going to continue tooling and texturing the rest of this and then I will meet y'all back here to do the paint job. So here we are. I've gotten all the things kind of tooled and textured a bit. Um, and I need to go through and establish where the buckles are going to be. Go ahead and get those things uh, punched and stuff. Um, so here I have my buckles. And I'm actually just going to be feeding it right up through. You can see I gave us a very generous amount of space. Seems like it's going to work out okay. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my wing divider. And I'm going to set it open to about an inch. There we are. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to have a rivet here on the tip of our strap and a rivet here. Just two little rivets like that. Um, actually, I'm just going to mark out four. And then in between these two right here, that's where I'm going to line up and have... I've got this oblong hole punch. And it's perfect for just feeding through the tongue of a, uh, a buckle. There we are. Just like that. And now, here's my hole punches. I'm going to do a hole... This is, I've used it so much I can't tell. Looks like one eighth of an inch is the size of hole punch. This is my favorite for feeding the rivets through. There's that one. And there's that one. <clears throat> so what we're going to do then is I'm going to feed the buckle through. The tongue will come up through this groove that we, or this uh, long hole that we did. And then I'm going to feed it back down. And it's on this back side here that these guys are going to get riveted together. And then our buckle's just going to sit there just like that. And how long will that make our final piece? Let me sketch this. I've done something and messed up my finger and it hurts real bad to bend it. But, oh well. <laughs> so that's going to give us... Oh, what's that, 11 inches on this side? So this will end up being 22 inches long. So I think that'll be just fine. So I'm going to do this same thing on the other end. And then what I'm going to do... And I'm not going to set the buckles yet. Not until after it's all been stained and everything. But then on this piece, that's going to be the front section. I still have my wing divider set to just an inch. I'm going to do... Two, three, four, and hey, why not? Let's do a fifth one. So I'm going to do a little rivet decorative here on the tip of this one. And then right here will actually be our first hole that we punch. Two, three, four, and there's a fifth one. So I'm going to do a smaller hole for just a decorative rivet on the tip on each side. And then I'm actually going to do a 3 16 inch hole that the belt loop will go through, or the belt, like the tongue of the belt buckle. do that to both sides hmm. so 
so there we are. And now I need to figure out what exactly it is I'm gonna do about this necklace, this neck piece. Um, I think I have enough on here to be able to do a buckle. But let me see. I need to measure and see what the inner diameter is. So it's at 20 at the halfway point, so there's 21, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so yeah, this is quite a bit larger than what it needs to be to go around her neck. So I think I'm going to have this done down to where it can be a buckle as well. So I'm going to go assemble the tools for that, and I'll meet you all right back here. So it actually come through and trimmed down um, these uh, two ends, and I have a much smaller punch here <clears throat> that... Uh, it's not my favorite kind. I very much prefer the solid design of this one to this one, but I work with what I have. And I'm reducing my... I've reduced my wing divider to three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to do a hole here and here, and then just come through and kind of do that same uh, four dots as what I did on my... Uh, the belt portion and I'm going to position this and I'm going to punch that hole and now I'm going to punch that hole and punch this hole. So now this will feed through quite comfortably right here and then a rivet will go through right there and so that's how that will sit and so now this is going to be threading through and sizing down like that so I'm gonna do in that same three quarters of an inch I'm gonna give ourselves a few options and I'm gonna do a smaller hole this one's five thirty seconds So now that will let us adjust down to here, which what's the measurement of that? Mm. Hopefully that should sit pretty nicely right around her collarbone of the client. Excellent. So now I believe it's uh, time to start painting. And I'm going to do a base layer of chartreuse mixed with green. It's going to be a little half and half. But before I do that, let me go ahead and <clears throat> punch the holes for this one. So I'm going to get the holes punched and then I'm going to resituate and we'll be right back to do the paint job. So you can see here, I've gone through and I've done a quick base paint job of that green and chartreuse leather dye. Um, and then I just have a binder clip here actually holding this on that as it starts to dry, I want it to behave in this shape. So um, I'm going to keep going through and um, painting the other two pieces as well as a back strap that's going to go from point to point on the back that's going to have a buckle in the center as well. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll meet you all right back here.
So here we have our belt and we have all of the scale, scale strips attached. And I'm using um, large rivets from Tandy Leather in the nickel plated silver color. And you wanna make sure that your rivet's thick enough to be able to go through both layers of the leather, but not so much that it's going to like, you don't want too much kind of poking through. So I have a one inch carriage buckle, which I really like because it's got the thing on both ends to behave like a belt keeper. And we're just gonna slide this on, push the tongue up through that groove that we cut, and then push that back down through. And then I'm feeding the rivet through the back side. And these are just quick rivets. You can use whatever you kind you have on hand. And then I'm folding it around and you can see how it's pushed up through here. And setting it down on the edge of my work block. I'm gonna see if I can't. I'll set it on the other edge of my work block. Or just in the middle, I don't know. Nope, it's gonna have to be on the edge. And I'm gonna set the rivet cap just over the top. And I don't know if you could hear it, but it clicks. And then you have the concave side of your rivet setter and just set that over the head. And then you find your hammer and then you whack the crap out of it. Just like that. And so now our belt loop, our buckle, is nice and attached. Just like that. And so I'm gonna do that same thing on the other end as well as on um, our neck piece here. And then I'll meet y'all right back here shortly. So we got the belt taken care of and now it's time to join the necklace to the scale mail. So the way that I'm going to be doing this is I'm positioning it and I wanna see how much we can join to it because the more that is joined and distributed along the edge here, the better the support is going to be. So I think I'm gonna shave back to here. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna come four scales back on each side. I just, I literally just had, there they are. Okay, sorry, I had lost my pliers. Um, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna open this ring up. I'm gonna see if I can't zoom in a little bit for y'all. Get this camera angle working. Okay. So I'm just gonna open the rings and kinda remove them into a bin. And then, it's the one downside to having good closures is it can be really hard to find the closure on the ring. And I knew that I was going to be doing this, um, but that didn't stop me from weaving that section anyways, because I knew it would be quite small, so it's only a little bit of work getting shaved off, but it made weaving the rest of it so much easier, just having a center point to weave from. Which, if future Vaughn remembers to, I will go through and have um, links down in the video description where linking to show you how to weave your own scale mail. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. Right on. What does that even mean? Hey, Annie. Yeah. I'm recording. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, you've been recording for two hours. No, like recording for in the video. Oh, well, now I know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so coming back in from editing. Okay, so I'm kind of whittling down some on either side. I wanted to make sure to come in kind of like four rings on each side and this is going to help me by like keeping me from weaving in too much from one corner and there it is because I use my fingernail to kind of figure out and find where the uh, where the closure is there we go and I think one more might do the trick There we go. Okay, let's see. How much more? It looks like this is my last one to remove. And then over here on this side. There we go. So I've detached that portion of the scale mail. 
just like that. And so now we get to figure out how exactly we're going to attach this to the necklace base. So let me zoom back out for y'all. Scooch this down some. And so with the necklace, I'd like to have it line up similarly to how it did on the belt. Um, but I have my wing divider here. And I'm going to figure out the established distance between the scales when they're laying properly. Looks like... Just a little wider. Yeah, okay. And so this way we can do one here. Nope, that's a little too wide, I think. When they're in there. And then with it still lined up, I'm going to just kind of eyeball it. There and there. There and there. And there and there. Um, bum, bum, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 da. And so it looks like they're actually a little closer together. So there's that one. There's that one. There's that one. And there's that one. Okay, excellent. So now put that over there. I'm going to tuck this off to the side. And use my cutting board and my very smallest hole punch, which I believe is 1 16th of an inch. <clears throat> it's the same one that I used for punching holes on the scale belt. And I'm just going to line this up and whack it. And now that I have this first baseline, I'm going to add in a second hole just a few millimeters off to the side of it. This way I can double up the rings because I feel like that's much more substantial than if I only had a single ring coming through. So there's that. One... Okay, so now, mm, that's complicated, because I didn't think of that, because how there's one on this side, because now I'm going to need to do another one on the other side, and so I might just have three rings doubled up there in the center. We'll see what happens, but I was not thinking ahead, but that's okay. Fake it till you make it. We got this. Okay. So you can see that's how those little holes go in. I'm so pleased with the way that the sheen on this has turned out. Okay, so now we're going to come in and use these scale rings. And these are 16 gauge 5 sixteenths uh, inner diameter ring, aluminum rings. And I'm going to see if I can't come in. I'm actually going to set these off to the side. And I'm just bringing my scale mail back up, trying to get it to lay properly. Because more than half of it's hanging off the table, so it makes it like it really wants to just fall off because gravity okay so now I am going to be starting here in the center I'm just going to hook this through and then I guess I'm going to skip that center one I might go through and do a rivet later there's a moth in here um and I'm just going to thread that right through right there or try to. Most of this crafty stuff is easier said than done sometimes, even with words being hard. Okay. 
there we go. Sometimes if you're not getting it, just try rotating a little bit in one direction or the other, and it'll modify your angle of insertion enough that it'll kind of let you figure out what's going on. So, kind of encourage that ring on through the leather, and I'm going to continue up the edge of this on both sides, um, just hooking through the center of the scale, and then hooking through the leather, through both holes, so there'll be two scales going through, or two rings going through each scale, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. This is how joining to the neck has come out. It turned out I didn't have anything for right there, um, which I'm not sure if they want me to fill it in or if they want me to put a rivet there. I might just leave it kind of bare for now because we might be able to attach a charm or a chain or a loop or something. Like we'll figure that out as we go. But I super duper love the way that that joined because it looks, you know, on purpose. So now the next part is going to be to come down. And if any of your scales aren't laying correctly, just kind of push them back into place but I'm going to be riveting to this scale um, and so to do this I'm actually going to make a washer out of a another piece of leather and here I'm using a 3 8 inch hole punch I'd love to I want to see if they have some hole punches that are quite large like if I could get like a one inch hole punch that'd be amazing yeah. make sure that there aren't anything in between your cutting board and your cutting block like y'all can hear the difference that that makes and I'm just gonna punch out two pieces of leather just like that I'm gonna use this much thinner um, much smaller hole punch to push those blanks up and through and so now from here let me angle this up just a little bit and I'm going to be using a 1 8 inch hole punch it's my favorite for doing a hole for rivets and I'm gonna punch a hole in it and if it's hard to get it off you can do this you got it you might be able to use some like Aussie wax or something um, to pull it back off but you're basically just making like a little donut so now I'm gonna remove my cutting board and we have our scale top oh no one of them ran away come back there you are <laughs> and I'm going to take one of my rivets and these are quick rivets from Tandy Leather and I'm going to feed it through the uh, the washer that we made and then I'm gonna feed it through our ring and you can see that lets it grip and now I'm gonna put our other piece of leather there on top and now I'm going to put a rivet cap and what did I do with my rivet setter that I promptly lost destroy my life y'all Oh, I'm looking directly at it. There it is. Um, sorry. So I'm going to set that and then kind of whack the crap out of it. There we go. And so now that is very firmly and securely attached to the scale. And we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Finding and isolating our end scale. Taking another rivet, feeding that through, feeding it through the back side. And then setting our strap. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. I'm going to set my strap 
making sure that the correct side of the material is facing outward. Put on the rivet head, put on the rivet setter, and whack it. There we go. And there we are, just like that. And so now, I still need to set the buckle on this end, and that's just as easy as sliding this over, sliding the tongue through the groove, and then tucking this end down and in. Now I'm going to use another rivet to feed through the back side. And here through the second hole. And now you can take this, and I like to work off the edge of my block, because you can see it lets the buckle kind of sit more comfortably. Put the rivet cap on there, the rivet setter, and just hammer the crap out of it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to set up a different camera angle, and we're going to put this on the mannequin and see how that goes. Hey, y'all. So here you can see how it has all come together. Um, this mannequin's dimensions do not match up with the client's, so I have it on super duper big as it'll go setting, um, whereas the client sits more with the buckle, you know, in about four or five inches on each hip. Um, but now you can totally see, though, the way that it attaches up to the neck band, the way that these densely laid scales kind of behave. And here you can see in the back the way that the scales will sit and behave over the bum. kind of twist and get things to lay a little differently, but I love the way that it sits and kind of shapes everything. Again, the mannequin's dimensions do not line up, so um, I actually ended up clamping in an extension piece of uh, leather just to get it to hold the shape that it would um, <clears throat> whenever it's on the client. So I think as far as getting it to match up with the mask goes, I'm, I, I think I did as best a job as I could. Um, I have contacted the client and I'm waiting to hear back from her to see what she thinks, but um, I was super stoked to have the opportunity to make this piece, to try out these new different methods that I think I'll be able to incorporate into more, you know, future projects. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a note down in the comment section below. Um, if you enjoy my work and would like to support the production of daily free tutorials the way that I have been doing, please consider checking me out on Patreon. There'll be links down in the video description below, as well as like a uh, little bubble popping up on one of the sides of the screen where you can go and watch a video where I talk into much more, de uh, much more detail about what we're doing over at Patreon. Um, and if you'd like to support my work but don't want to become a patron, um, uh, find me on whatever social media you enjoy and follow me there because we do periodic giveaways and all sorts of stuff and it'll kind of keep you in the loop. But all I can ask is that you just keep learning new things, trying new things, and just doing your best and enjoying it because that's the point of all of this. So thanks guys for hanging out with me and I'll see y'all around. Happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>